seat. Yesterday there were a lot of points given, a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance. Everybody put out, everybody put out. But as you know, it's gonna be someone up here, it's gonna be a lot of people here, and it's gonna be someone here. As of right now, this is your mission commander because Chris Way has the most points. Being granted the leadership position is definitely a big responsibility with 32 people that you don't know very well and that have a huge spectrum of ability. There are SEALs, there are Rangers, there are special operators here, and there are also civilians that have almost no experience in anything that we're doing. And making sure that they're accountable and that we're accountable for their performance is, is, is certainly a big responsibility. So far this competition's going really well. I have heard from maybe six or seven people this morning that they're a little beat up, a little sore and really tired. And I told them, I said, but the good news is you're way better off right now than you're gonna to be tomorrow because every day is going to get harder. But they came here for a challenge. They all came here for a challenge. I broke the news yesterday to them that it's not fun and games here. We're here to create a team. You're going to go on a special mission, and you're going to save a life. And we're going to take the best of the best. So I need to push them hard. I need to push them hard out here in the desert, running, navigation, long gun, 50 cal, 14s, pistol, navigation underground everything we do is to see who the fastest are the best the best operators and those who could think clearly under stress the number one person we call that person our mission commander in seal training we call it the buds class leader but this person here which is chris right now is responsible for making sure all 32 including himself rotate through all the weapons, get the land navigation, everything I task him with, the little bit of information we have, what we're getting from government headquarters, when I get that, I give it to Chris, and he passes it along to the team. So they're not only just shooting, doing a lot of PT, but they're also planning a mission that's gonna take place in less than a week. So why I decided to take part in Surviving Man is, it mirrors a lot of the stuff that I've done previously, and I thought, man, I. I can do a lot of that stuff, you know, and I was worried about some of it, but, you know, I want to know where I am. I want to go up against the best guys they could find, and I want to I want to see where I rank among that. I want my kids to see me doing it and saying, yeah, that's my dad out there. He's killing it. Memorization, enhancement exercise, and observational skills, enhancement exercise. Snipers use it, sealed use it, law enforcement uses this exercise. And on an intel lock, you have to memorize and gather a lot of data points. In 1901, English author Rudyard Kipling published a book called Kim about an Irish orphan kid in 1885 India who's training to be a spy. One of the things he has taught is a situational awareness memorization game that we now call the Kim's game. You can't write anything down, you can't take pictures, you can't talk. You're just looking and you're trying to gather all these data points and you're trying to memorize everything with great detail. All right, let's do this. Any data points if you can. Get that in your long-term memory because you're going to reveal it later on sometime in the course. Everybody away from the table. Everybody away from the table. Go ahead and sit back down, please. Everybody sit back down, please. We call it the pinnacle shot. Shooting some big rifles. 45 seconds to make 12 shots at downrange 100, 200, and 400 yards targets. 
with a platform that the contestants only had a little time to practice with. Just to kind of go over the, op the optic itself, I have the zero stop, zero lock style turrets. Now I've already set that up for you. So it's basically, you're just gonna point shoot and I'm going to explain more in depth of where you need to hold over on the reticle. So this thing is specifically set up for this caliber and this, this bullet, this bullet grain. So basically what that's meaning is once we get this thing all dialed in, it's just point and shoot. You just gotta know where to point and shoot on the, the reticle. I'll be standing by at the ready to do the adjustments to you to find your natural pocket real quick when you shoulder into the rifle. I'll keep the base locked in. The only thing I ask is you guys don't come in and stop down on the legs. It's not designed for that. It's for you to actually stand on either <clears throat> side. So it's the uh, same platform we shot yesterday, the AR. 5.56, five, oh, you know, but the ranges have extended quite considerably. I think our, our farthest range yesterday was 100 yards, okay. and going out to 400 yards today. So your, your fundamentals of shooting have to be on point to start hitting targets at 200 and 400 yards. And you got a minute to put 12 <laughs> rounds down range. That's, that's a challenge. I would like to say, yeah, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna hit all the targets, but uh, I'm definitely gonna give everything I have and, and see what happens. My competitive advantage comes from very early on, just very driven into sports, into athletics, always competing. Like I remember crying after like losing a fifth grade basketball game and everybody's looking at me like, what's your problem, bro? This is fifth grade. In terms of mission planning, I would say my strengths would probably be, I'm definitely a shooter first and foremost, and uh, as long as I'm comfortable with the weapon system, you know, I'm gonna get hits. My name is Isaac Dubois, and I am from Eagle Mountain, Utah. Very competitive person. I don't like to lose at anything, and uh, I've always been that way, and just the way I am, I always wanna be number one. setup is the tripod. Normally in the standing position you don't have support, but this tripod creates some support and it's adjustable so you can adjust from 100, 200, and 400 yards, which is pretty unique. I was unfamiliar with the tripod system. So that took a little bit of getting used to, but uh, got to improvise, adapt, and overcome. I had every target all the way out to the 400. I felt pretty good about it. I have never shot long range. Leave that to the snipers. I don't plan on sniping people, so I haven't practiced that, but it looks fun. I've never shot um, anything past 100 yards, so it's totally new for me, a new platform. But it's really motivating to get into more of the um, precision rifle training, and I'm really looking forward to it. Give it all I got. I'm trying to be smart and play the long game, but at the same time, I don't want to hold anything back. My goal today is to really make sure I'm focusing. I don't have a lot of distraction. I was a little nervous. I haven't shot uh, in a while, but it was good. Shooting off of a tripod like that, there were some issues with pivoting, but overall it was an awesome experience. Lots of adrenaline still pumping right now. 45 seconds is a very short window um, to hit all of those, so they definitely made it challenging. Well, it's smooth, uh, good trigger pull. It's a, just a great rifle. Shoot.
Uh, so far today, we've been shooting at a 100, 200, 400 with an AR. I got 10 out of 12 on the AR. I typically would expect myself to get all 12 out of 12. There's a little bit of a different platform here today than what I'm used to. Uh, shooting that rifle was smooth as butter. That trigger was amazing. <laughs> Didn't do as well as I thought I was gonna do, but it was still a lot of fun. That says a good AR, some of the best I've shot. Hit, 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 hit. The rifle is nice. That is a nice shooting uh, piece of weapon there. You know, that tripod, never shot like that before, but you know, I'm real happy with what I shot there. A um, Little bit more time, I'd have had a perfect score, but I'm not gonna rush a shot, so I shot perfect for the time I had. My plan is just to finish, uh, hopefully ahead of the people who are ahead of me. I don't remember if I shot a perfect score, but I know I did really well. The tripod was something new. It's a new design, something I'd never used before. Just trying to handle a 55 grain bullet and, you know, 15, 20 mile an hour wind is, can be tough. What's amazing is how everyone did under the circumstances. One contestant made all 12 shots. Chris Way. But six contestants tied for second place, shooting 10 shots each, and eight tied for third with nine shots each. Next up, the 50 cal. No points for this one, but the experience of shooting that bad boy is a reward in itself. My name is Josh Marcus. Like yesterday, I'm the owner of Poor Lead Operations. Sitting here in front of us is uh, the Elitus. It's our 50 BMG custom made precision rifle. What we're gonna do today uh, is shoot this at 600 yards. This thing's capable for 2,500 plus. We've done it before. Who hasn't shot a 50 cal before? The biggest thing you gotta focus on is when you guys get behind this rifle, make sure you grab the rifle and bring it into your body and you hold on to it tight. You do not wanna have any gap between the rifle and yourself before you pull the trigger, because you'll know the second you do it. You'll never do it again. So when you put the magazine in, there's a notch in the back here. There's a notch in the, in the inside of the, uh, the chassis. So all you're gonna do is just roll it up in here and then slap it, slap it in just like that, okay? So it's back first and then straight up. Today we're gonna shoot a 50 cal. Looks like it's gonna be three rounds. I've never shot one of those. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested in finding out what that's all about. Right now they're setting up the 50 cal. And so there's a mixed group uh, some have shot a 50 cal before, some have not. Although it's another long rifle, it's a bolt action, it is a huge round, 750 grains, a ton of powder. I mean, it's literally, the round is that long uh, in the casing and it rocks you. It's intimidating, especially after you pull a trigger that first time. Uh, and it's like, oh my gosh, and you have to completely reset because it, the recoil is, is so significant. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they deal with the adversity of shooting a 50 cal. Now, the weapon they're shooting today is stripped down. It's quite a bit lighter than many 50 cals are. They got the weight down using carbon fiber and stuff to, to 18 pounds. It's gonna be on a bipod because it's a very big weapon to try and, and shoot unsupported. So we'll be at a table with a bipod and the recoil is, is pretty remarkable and it gets your attention. And now if you're intimidated for your second, third, or fourth shot, that's gonna play in. So you've gotta really follow through. You've gotta have a good stock weld, pull that in really nice nice and tight and squeeze that trigger and that anticipation is a killer.
Well, that's a 50 BMG. It's an absolutely gorgeous gun made with a carbon fiber barrel. It's really light, so it kicks a little more than the ones I've been used to shooting, but it's got an amazing muzzle brake on it. It has some recoil, <laughs> and, and I'm a big girl, so it moved me quite a bit. That was the 50 BMG. That was a two for two at 600 yards, and that was amazing. You got to manhandle the rifle. You got to not let the rifle manhandle you. You just got to get behind it and hold on for dear life. There is no better sound in the world than hitting steel, especially at that distance, especially with a cartridge this big. It's one of the best feelings in the world is hearing that ting. Kind of makes you giddy from the toes all the way up to here. 50 cal definitely gets your attention. Uh, it's fun to shoot though. And uh, I think the longest uh, kill in combat is done with that round, over a mile. I've never shot a 50 uh, BMG. Uh, so looking forward to it. I'm not really nervous. I think we're in good hands out here. Hi. No, I think the 50 counts are bigger than I am. It'll be an interesting experience. <laughs> Just shot the 50 cal. That thing's spectacular. It's about 18 pounds alone without the scope. The way it kicked me is like uh, it was like getting kicked by a mule for the first time. <laughs> I was able to shoot a 50 cal. I've never shot a 50 cal before. I don't know what position I am, but I promise you that I'm fighting to get to the top and get to that number one spot. Well, one of the candidates actually picked the 50 up and shot it standing, so I was pretty impressed by that. You can do it! Yeah! <laughs> it's been fun to watch. I'm enjoying the, every single day more and more watching them go through the uh, different evolutions. So it's been a real uh, honor to be here and we enjoy it. Nobody knows this yet, but what's going to happen after this is they're going to be doing a tie of hope and it's going to be hard on them. And they're already saying, well, if I skip this evolution, I'll just take zeros. So you're going to see a big spread after today. The top people, and it's going to separate the men from the boys or the women from the girls or whatever. There's going to be a big spread after today because some people are already talk about, I won't do that evolution. It's going to hurt me too much. But that's okay. That's okay. It's all going as we planned it. And now we come to the tire pull. What can I say? If you just had dinner, you might want to skip this part. You're going to grab one rope. It's going to have two tires on. Perfect. Grab it. We had some surprise PT where we did some tire drags. And man, that was killer. Not only was it introducing the strength part of it, but then how fast can you do it without overdoing your exertion? Are you ready? During the tire pull, we all lined up on a line and we had to sprint to the end of the range, grab two tires and a rope and pull it back. But the issue is that one or two people in front of me were getting the dust everywhere. So the, especially the people, you know, who were behind me, it was just like swimming in dust. So you didn't notice it and then you're inhaling really deep and then as soon as you're done, people just start pulling up. We inhaled a lot of dirt, and I think every one of us were coughing for the last hour. I'm definitely a shooter. I'm not really a runner, but uh, personally, I need to work on my physical fitness a little bit more. I got a few days notice before I had to come out here, so I wasn't training like everybody else was, but I got the email and two days later I was out here giving it my all. I think mentally is stronger than physical in anybody. And so, you know, if you, if you don't quit, you'll be amazed what physically you can do. You know, the mental aspect, if you do quit, it doesn't matter how much more your body had left. So I think I'm ready with both, but certainly mentally. On your mark, get set, go! We ran and then we pulled some um, tires. That was crazy. The running part to go get the tires wasn't so bad, but pulling it back, oh man, it's, it definitely smoked a lot of us. My legs feel like spaghetti. I'm feeling a little tired, um, knees hurt. Definitely struggling. Mark, set, go! 
you know, we had that tire pull event where a uh, 200 meter sprint followed by a 200 meter tire drag on the way back. You had two tires attached to a rope that you just had to drag back and I knew that was somewhere I could make up a little bit of ground so I tried to go out, all out on it and I, I paid for it. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was tough. Those last couple yards I was struggling to get there but finished up and happy with my time. So we did the uh, PT with the tire pull and on the way back we kicked up so much dust somehow I inhaled enough of it that it's irritated my lungs and uh, I need to be sitting out for a little while. What did you call it? It's laryngospasm. So my lungs were displeased and did not want to let me take in enough air and I need to sit down and relax because even now, talking to you, I'm still dropping my blood oxygen a little. That was a good group. Uh, they pushed it pretty hard. Obviously, we're dragging the tires back. You gotta try and keep the momentum, those legs pumping. You gotta dig in a little bit, bend at the waist, and that's a burner, a thigh burner for sure. So the tire pull today was uh, pretty rough and unexpected. I'm not gonna say that it's 100%, but I'm definitely putting effort in everything I do. Some guys, when they came in here, they thought that they were hot shots and they wanted everybody to know it. You know, those aren't really the people that I'm worried about, people I'm worried about here. People who come in and put their head down and just work hard and win every single challenge. What they have to focus on to succeed in Surviving Man is don't lose sight of the prize, and the prize is mission success. Everything they're doing here is for mission success, being part of a team, and we're seeing that. The team is really gelling, and it's good to see. Especially that they're all graded for everything. It's all point system. So it's individual points, but they're still helping each other. Really, my philosophy is, if you push yourself hard enough and you think it's too hard, you're wrong until the point comes where you might be hallucinating, bleeding, or passing out. And so I would push myself to the limit where I'd collapse, bleed, or start hallucinating. And I don't want to get anybody to that point, but I want to get them just under that and then back off, because I don't want, we don't want to hurt anybody. But if people are willing to give it that much, back off right before they get hurt, that's what we're looking for. Delta 14 chassis is a very, very simple idea. All it did was I cut off this entire back end and made a Mossberg 500. So if you took a Mossberg 500 shotgun and took off the stock, that's what you'd be looking at. <coughs> what that does gives you the modularity to be able to put a pistol grip back onto a Monte Carlo or you could gender change it. Gen changing with, say, a Mesa tactical adapter to be able to utilize a buffer tube and an AR-15 pistol grip. I'm gonna introduce Mr. Ackman here. He is going to be able to explain this competition to you. I'm considering this event something like you found your enemy's weapon. You've lost yours, you stumble upon this, you better have enough familiarity to pick it up and solve the problem. The competitor is gonna start right here. Um, at the, the command of go, they're gonna sprint down to that first table down there. They're gonna pick up the rifle, load it, and they're gonna shoot their assigned target five times. Drop the gun, move up to the next table, pick that one up, load it, shoot their tar target five times. As soon as the last shot is discharged, round complete. Mine is set, ready, go.
looking at everyone in the competition, the only thing I feel like I might be stronger on is some of my fundamentals because I'm around firearms every day. Maybe not every single platform, but I do shoot a lot. But you know, these guys are pros. Like there's so many awesome people here. Um, it's kind of hard to even feel like you're even in the same stratosphere as some of these guys because they're like superheroes, but I'm just doing my best. When you're putting everything that you have into it, yeah, you're gonna be pushing yourself to the maximum. That's the difficult piece of it. That was the evolution of popping my calf, so I took it slow, uh, so I didn't blaze through it, but I did complete it. It's just taking one evolution at a time, trying to stay calm and just make the best of the experience. Just acquiring the target, like which one it was, it was a little confusing because you're at an angle. And then I was unclear about which target I was on, and so I just it was really slow. Just the way it goes. One or two of those shots might have went off target, but overall, it felt like a pretty good run. Now I just gotta go find a stretcher. It was a lot of fun. I feel like speed-wise and running, I was pretty on point. Um, slowed down a little bit by the two malfunctions at the end. But past that, hopefully the hits are good enough. Yeah, I can't believe how fast these guys are sprinting, picking up that weapon and firing. Yeah. Complete composure. Um, after doing that sprint, it's uh, super impressive what they're doing. The shooting has been a challenge for me a little bit, which I knew it would be coming in. I was supposed to shoot five rounds the first stop, and I shot four, and then we had a malfunction at the end. You had a lift over here, you still got 10 good shots, and your time wasn't too far off most people's. I think that's the fastest time. How many I hit? Excellent job. Fastest time yet, 27.18. Putting myself up against some of these guys that have been overseas and fighting for our country and have these skill sets, it's a good test to see where I'm at mentally compared to them. I did better than I expected. Of course, we couldn't complete this evolution without Randy having a chance to test the platform. Call it a uh, host's prerogative.
Hi, my name's Todd Pearson. I'm the, I am run SAR USA. The gun you're going to be shooting today is the SAR 9X. Uh, the X is a package gun which comes with a holster, mag holder, flashlight. And this is the gun that the Turkish military is using today. The gun had to go through a 50,000 round torture test without a failure to go from stage one to stage two to get it to the contract. And it actually went 90,000 rounds with three failures and, and it won the contract. The first thing you'll see is the ergonomics are exceptionally good. Uh, the gun points and feels really good in your hand. Uh, and the, the way they manufacture over there with state-of-the-art machinery, it's, it's incredible. We're going to be running turning targets under time pressure. Targets turn, you'll present the gun, come out and engage your assigned target. You're going to drop to a knee, come around this way. Okay, now, from here, obviously I can't hit target 10, so I may need to change an angle to be able to get target 10, but you must utilize your cover behind this. When you go overseas in the war zones, you're always looking for what's cover and what's concealment. Couches, boards, walls that concealed you from the enemy. It doesn't protect you from bullets. Cover is better than concealment. If you have both, all the better. What we want to do is, in their minds, know the difference between cover and concealment. When you leave a barricade, if it's cover or concealment, and you have your whole body out here, you're giving away all your cover or concealment. You try to leave just a little bit of your body outside that cover or concealment. Just give a little. You don't come out and expose yourself the whole way. And also you want to be able to change positions quickly. Go to the kneeling quickly, stand quickly, and you change your position. You might fire two rounds and then change your position and take cover. So far so good. Barriers, kneeling, all those things are a challenge, but they seem to be taking it all in stride, no issues. I shot the best out of my four, which was the top four competitors. So that's good. I shot eights and better. Landon and others were watching them here, and they're using strategy, and they're smart. They're letting others go in front of them to see how fast they're going, and then they get a longer break, and they get a longer break, then they know how fast they have to go. Yeah. It's ingenious for them. It's, it's a smart move. It's absolutely a smart move. It's, it's not always best to go first. Some of them are taking a little too long in acquiring the target after they've moved, and then the, the time runs out and the target moves, or the turn sideways, so. And it looks like they're out there for a long time getting that good, good shot. That side picture, yeah. Giving up their cover, which defeats the purpose. And some of the guys, I mean, it's so impressive what I just saw there, they're yeah. so fast. Very fast. They're getting the fast shots in. Yeah, moving. Absolutely. So we've advanced quickly this week. Yesterday, it was basic shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean. Everybody did well. These guys and ladies are all shooters, but today it's advanced shooting moving into tactical shooting. And that's usually after a couple of weeks of training. And we're doing it on day two. And that's only because we have such good qualified people here. Absolutely. Basic training is pretty much basic marksmanship. Unless you move to a more elite units, you're not gonna do a lot of move and cover and other types of, of shooting. I mean, just going through basic training, we didn't even do pistols. So it's not till you move into more elite units that you start to do more pistol work, more moving cover and, and, and all of that sort of training. Athletics are athletics. It doesn't matter if I'm standing and, and need to engage and move and fire, or if I'm trying to dive off a diving board or jump and hit a volleyball or wrestle and take somebody down. Athletics, there's a, there's a common thread in all of those positions, taking advantage of your core, staying in balance, in good position, and be able to move and do that uh, when it counts. learning an incredible amount. I'm, I'm getting to do the things I wanted to do. I don't get to move and shoot, uh, so that's, that's all new to me. Shooting off behind barricades is new to me, but that was the whole point of signing up, to 
to get better. Randy and I are looking at the points of everybody and uh, there's quite a spread. It ranges basically on day one, the end of yesterday, Chris Way, who is now the, the uh, mission leader, he's in first place, that's why he's mission commander now, but looking at it here, he's got 710 points, but he's only 20 points ahead of Nick, Nick Ryan, who's right on his tail. And depending on what happened today, Nick could actually surpass Chris and take the position of interim yeah. leader. Landon Church has had a good day today too. He's got the fastest uh, time with the tire drag and, and uh, he shot pretty clean as well. Yeah, the guy that's sitting in third, yeah. yeah Very yeah. fit, got a good head on his shoulders and he's our youngest competitor, so. It's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah he's strong-minded. And Jen, way up there with all the men, She's in uh, sixth place yesterday. She's, she's 635 points, which is only 75 points away from the lead. And that could be made or lost almost any evolution coming yeah, up. Yeah. Top five are, they're way up ahead. The ropes course is, it's challenging for me. It's not something I'm super comfortable with because I haven't done a lot of it. So it's an opportunity to definitely work through some of the uh, limitations that I have with heights and things like that and just see what I can do and see how far I can go. Now for you, the viewer, just imagine as sore as you've ever been and then doing all this garbage. <laughs> the main thing for me to see right now is character. What I want to see above how good they are on the ropes or climbing, I want to see how strong they are up here and what the character is. Skills you can keep building on, building and building. If I see a lack in character, a lack in leadership, you can't have that in a team. We finished the day on the towers doing ropes course. Coming into the show, we were told a few things. One, that it would be physical, and two, there would be a lot of skill sets involved. Chris Way was the first person to go, and he literally flew up the cargo net, ran up it. And the rest of us just looked at each other like, we're all dead. But turns out that the timed part of the course didn't start until the top of the cargo net, which was fortunate. Within the team that we're assessing, there are people that are tens and there are people that are zeros. And so the ropes course was a great way to assess the skill sets that those individuals have so that we could develop the weak ones and we can maintain the strong ones. It was something I was looking forward to as a rock climber and mountaineer. I was a little disappointed with myself in terms of not having the urgency that I felt like I needed to get through it faster. And I got a little bit hung up with my foot and the safety lines. And so <laughs> that took me a while to figure out how to keep kicking that thing forward so that I could keep moving. Otherwise, I'd get hung up because I weigh like 112 pounds or something. Honestly, it didn't feel much of a challenge. I just went with it. It felt natural. I always like to pretend as a kid I was a monkey, so this is my way to do it as an adult. <laughs> I'm not afraid of heights at all, and I love being up there and doing the rope stuff and doing the climbing walls, and I was in an element, so I was just loving it up there, got through it just pretty quickly. Top 10%, top 5% on that one. got out of shape with COVID and everything that was happening. And I started a dog rescue and that kind of consumed my life for a few years. So for me, just preparing to get back into shape to get to the show, my body couldn't physically hold myself up long enough to pull myself to make it across. Oh, I was so frustrated. So they kept saying to me, just another couple more inches. And I'd look back and they would be standing like three or four feet back. So I'm like, they're lying to me. I'm like, I don't have like another two or three inches. Well, come to find out, I literally only had another like two to three inches and the platform was right behind me and I would have been fine. So I was so annoyed after I like gave out because I could have just pulled myself like one more time and I would have been there, <laughs> but whatever. It was worth it, it was fun, it was cool. She got in a position where she was underneath a cable. The lobster claw is wrapped underneath the cable, so she has to either be redone or try to get under that cable, one or the other. And they decided to just unhook one lobster claw at a time. 
she, she was yes. working hard. <laughs> she was working hard. She was making it across. Yeah. She had a good attitude through the whole thing. And she came off not knowing how close she was to the end. Yeah. I think if she had taken a quick look back and saw how close she was, I think she would have made it. The ropes course for me was a decision that I had to make to overcome a fear that I had. And I had been hesitant to make that decision for many, many years. And being faced with it in front of my peers in a such a way where the world was gonna be watching me, I knew that I had to overcome it and I just had to do it. And so what got me through it on Mother's Day was thinking about my kids and thinking about how difficult it was birthing them. And I thought that there was nothing else that could be more challenging than what I've already done as a mom. So I, I did it. That's really the exact thought that was in my mind at that moment. Well, that was about the most work I've ever done in my life. When I came down, got all these great people down here helping me out. One more time, grab on for dear life. Yeah. yeah. The ropes course was a great way to assess the skill sets that those individuals have so that we could develop the weak ones and we can maintain the, the strong ones. Coming up in the next episode, Sun. Oh, there's a way. That was brutal. Man, I'm gone, bro. We had several people missing. Be accountable to each other. Sir. I'm getting the feeling nobody sees a sense of urgency to you guys missing teammates who could be out in the desert dying right now. Chris believes he deserves respect, but that doesn't mean that he's earned it. I don't want to even talk about it. It's going to be a talking later on today. Stay tuned.